If I had to sum up today's entire video in a single word, I actually couldn't because today we have ourselves a cram session. That means I've got multiple stories, a couple of which have happy endings and the rest of which uh, definitely do not. We've got everything from a years long search for a woman who didn't even know people were looking for her to a massively popular influencer having a complete crybaby breakdown because literally one person called him out in a tweet. And overall, I can't wait to tell you who's who and who did what. But first, welcome. My name is D'Angelo and I am your professor of numeric gardening solutions. Which is a very real degree that I definitely do have. Or maybe this is just me broadcasting myself talking in my room like YouTube used to be. And in today's lecture, we've crammed everything from the Bridgerton ball to possibly one of the most pointless influencer merch drops I've ever seen. And to round it all out, we'll be looking at the stories behind a seasonal meme and a certified meltdown. So this whole cram session video format came about because there are some stories where, even if I don't talk about them right when they happen, they just live in my head absolutely rent free and I feel like I'll never be free until we discuss it. And the Bridgerton ball was definitely one of those things. So I feel like Netflix's smash hit show Bridgerton needs no introduction from the likes of me. This is one of their most talked about shows in recent years and it spawned the Queen's Ball a Bridgerton experience, which was an official Bridgerton themed live event. The event's been held in a few cities at this point and honestly it looks quite spectacular. There's like a ton of work put into the performance performances and matching the overall vibe of the show. And so one can imagine why people expected a little bit more from the Detroit Bridgerton themed ball. However, despite using Bridgerton on the web page and in the website URL, this event was not being hosted by Netflix and it was not associated with the show in any official capacity. Instead, it was organized by Uncle and Me LLC. And they may have wanted to bring on a few additional family members because I don't think those two cut it. The event can only really be described as a total bust with a soul violinist, absurdly cheap looking decorations, and a pole dancer who was apparently doing interpretive dance routines to the soul violinist's performance. Honestly, it sounds like they created a Bridgerton themed liminal space because this is pretty much what I imagine purgatory to be like, but it gets worse. $150 for bare minimum for everyone in a spectrum of all the way up to $1,000 per package. Where did that money go? Oh man, people who paid money to attend were not happy. As a coordinator myself, an event planner myself, I know what an experience is supposed to give and then it just didn't give that. The decor alone was less than $500. Many attendees also used the word scam, which I think is very fair in this case. There was apparently nobody checking tickets or anything like that, so you could have just thrown on a fancy gown and showed up for free if you wanted to. It was so bad that as people were showing up, other people were leaving and saying, you know, don't even bother going inside. And apparently guests warned about the raw chicken that they were being served and that cups were being reused. Honestly, I just want my money Back. I think we were all really angry about it because we had built up these expectations and the tickets were not cheap. Combine all that with the fact that the event was originally supposed to happen a month before, but Uncle and Me claimed that the venue canceled on them, though uh, some said that cancellation was because Uncle and Me would not pay the remaining money to rent the venue. And people also said the $2,000 prize for best dress that they announced on the website just straight up did not happen. And the whole thing just failed in every conceivable way, basically. Imagine thinking you're going to get something like like this, but uh, instead you wind up with this. It was very much a we have the Bridgerton ball at home situation, and many drew comparisons between this and the Willy Wonka experience, which was similarly ill-fated, but I think by far the most intriguing piece of media to come out of this whole situation was uh, The Cut getting an interview with the pole dancer. The Bridgerton ball pole dancer is just as confused as you are. <laughs> what a headline. Apparently, Uncle and me reached out to her the day of the event and they only confirmed her booking three hours before it started. And they had her walk around and say, hello, I'm your Bridgerton fairy. Uh, despite the fact that there was no fairy costume or really any sort of Bridgerton themed costume at all. Also, besides the two Bridgerton songs she danced to, she apparently did a routine to moves like Jagger as well, which I definitely associate with Regency era London personally. What was going through your head through all this? Asks the cut. I was just thinking, when is this going to be over? I'm getting paid, so just do your job and get it over with. You know what? Real. 
Honestly, at least she got her bag. It's just highly unfortunate for everyone else that they got scammed out of theirs. And if there's anything to learn from this and the Willy Wonka experience, 2024 just does not seem like a good year for this kind of thing at all. Anyway, let's talk about this one Redditor's mysterious curtains and how they sparked a years-long internet search for a woman who technically wasn't missing. This is the story of celebrity number six. Who are these movie stars in this fabric? Asks Reddit user Tansa H a few years ago. They checked across multiple subreddits to see if anybody could identify them, and most of the faces here were pretty easy to match. This is definitely a unique design for a curtain. I'm not quite sure I would want this hanging up because I would feel like it's just staring at me the whole time, judging me. But this is the celebrity in question. Celebrity 1 is a model, Celebrity 2 is an actor, you have the model again as number 3, another actor as celebrity number 4, and 5 is yet another model slash actor. But who, pray tell? is celebrity number six. As you can see, this Reddit user had to skip from five to seven because for years, nobody was able to identify this face. In fact, there were several elements that were throwing people off for a while. What is this mysterious shadow or strap? Question mark. This is a fairly androgynous face. Is this a man? Is this a woman? And so the celebrity number six subreddit was spawned in which Redditors did their darndest to find models and actors with the strongest cheekbones of all time to see if they could match them to the face on the curtain. And even even though they would get pretty close, one thing became clear. Even though a lot of people look similar to celebrity number six, nobody looked exactly like her. But then, Reddit user Stefan Morse created an altered version of the photo, mocking it up manually to look a little closer to a real human face. That way they could run it through a facial recognition site to see what came up. And what came up was the name Letitia Sarda. From there, a different Redditor was able to find Sarda's modeling work, and they actually got in contact with a photographer who had shot her before and that's when the photographer sent back this photo. Celebrity number six had been found. After almost five years of internet super sleuthing, the subreddit finally cracked the case. People on the subreddit were ecstatic. Where were you when celebrity number six was found? I feel like I'm witnessing history. This is absolutely insane. I never thought it would happen. And their excitement actually wound up causing this post to go viral, leading to this New York Times profile in which they actually got in contact with Leticia Sarda today. As you can see, she is still very much celebrity number six. I honestly feel like like part of what made the mystery happen for so long is her gaze is just so intense and that uniqueness was somehow immortalized even in fabric format. I think some people were just born to model, clearly. Anyway, Miss Sarda said she quit the profession in 2009 to take care of her grandma and start a family. And while she doesn't quite know how to feel about all the recent attention, she was very gracious about what was essentially a freak accident in which a throwaway photo from Woman Magazine was used on that curtain. Overall, it's just an amazing story. It's stranger than fiction, happy ending, and it's nice seeing one person's very innocent question turn into a years-long obsession for thousands of people which finally came to a resolution. Can't wait till we solve the rest of the innumerable mysteries of the internet someday, but one mystery that will never be solved is why are influencers so obsessed with causing their own problems? MKBHD, also known as Marquez Brownlee, is very much the face of tech review on YouTube. With almost 20 million subscribers, he's been at the top of the game for years now, and he's generally considered a trusted source. In fact, if you had asked me a couple weeks ago, I would describe him as one of the most drama-free YouTubers I could think of. Despite criticisms here and there, I don't think he really ever got into much of a scandal before this. But that was before he launched panels. I'm so pumped to be launching this app. People have asked me where I get wallpapers forever, so this is the answer, now and forever panels. And so basically, it's just a wallpaper app for iPhone and Android, but people were a little thrown by the fact that access to these wallpapers cost $50 a year for an annual subscription. But don't worry, if that's not your cup of tea, you could just pay $12 a month for wallpapers. So now, in a strange twist of fate, Marquez Brownlee was the one whose tech was being reviewed, and people found it, as TechCrunch put it, a bit underwhelming. Besides paying outright for the app, you could watch ads to unlock wallpapers instead. And at the very least, Marquez was sharing this revenue with the artists who created the wallpaper, saying that payments were apparently being split 50-50 with the artists. But even that was overshadowed by people being rightfully weirded out by the app's data requests, because Panels apparently tracks the user's location 
location, usage data, and personal identifiers across other apps and websites. So obviously that was seen as a privacy concern. But then Marquez pointed out that despite the data disclosures being excessive, as he admitted, for transparency, we'd never actually ask for your location, internet history, etc. The data disclosures that everyone is screenshotting are likely too broad and largely driven by what the ad networks suggest. So you don't need our data, the ads on your platform need our data through your app. I don't I don't understand what he's saying here. Regardless, this lack of clarity is not what you want when launching a new app, and that's not the only backtracking he had to do. As far as pricing, I hear you. It's our own personal challenge to work to deliver that kind of value for the premium version. I'll also be dialing back ad frequency for the free experience. Much more to come. But uh, the more that came, the worse everything wound up sounding. These wallpapers are all made by artists who can choose to involve AI or not in their creation process. It'll be up to you how much you value the human touch. So we're now charging people $50 a year for AI wallpapers while also possibly asking for too much data question mark, but it's not clear to anybody because you wrote it weird but don't worry because marquez was handpicking all the art so i guess he handpicked uh this wallpaper called orange which appears to be literally just the color orange which you have to watch to add to unlock not even in hd and so it's like how exactly is this helping artists when you are allowing ai generated art on the platform arts created using tools which are most likely ripping off the very artists you're supposedly supporting all of which is further diluted by the presence of low effort offerings like a uh, this, which I can't stress enough, is literally just the color orange. It's just such an unforced error. Like, nobody made him release this app, and if he did, his reputation would still be right where it was before. But instead, the backlash was relentless. Imagine having a large enough audience to make almost any idea work, and then settling on a subscription-based wallpaper app. People also pointed out how this seems kind of antithetical to Marquez's own philosophies. Golden rule number one of the internet, never tried to charge for something that was already already free. Oh, Marquez, you've become the very thing you swore to destroy. People started memeing his videos, making it seem like he was reviewing himself. The worst product I've ever reviewed for now. And really, the tides turned for him in a way that was, once again, completely avoidable. Now, some people were dramatically overreacting in my opinion. Imagine having a 15-year career of reviewing tech products and then launching a paid wallpaper app. I can't get over it. I'm legitimately stunned. Bro one-shotted his entire career. I do think he's gonna be fine. Reputation is definitely a big thing when you're a tech YouTuber, but again, he has been doing this for so many years. He has thousands of videos at this point. I don't really think this is like cancel MKBHD territory. I just think it's stupid. I just think it was an incredibly dumb decision, and I don't know how he thought it would go over well. The potential for dollar signs really just caused brain rot there, because not even his fans really seem to like it. How often does someone change their wallpaper that they need to pay $50 a year to do it? He's telling us to buy it on a promise of more? Didn't he say not to do that in the past? I still can't fathom the fact that they put an orange rectangle behind a paywall. That's actually kind of the part I'm still stuck on. You tried to sell the color orange to your fan base. We're out here monetizing colors now i don't i don't even know what to say ain't no way he thought that would go over well and it didn't how very predictable but anyway that's that story funnily enough this next story is actually pretty orange as well because we are going to talk about christian girl autumn at the beginning of september an ominous video was posted to tiktok Christian Girl Autumn is upon us. Now, if you're not familiar with the influencer behind Christian Girl Autumn, Caitlin Covington, she actually shows up every year, like clockwork, right as the weather starts to change, right as the leaves start to fall. And if I had to describe Miss Covington's aesthetic, she's basically like if pumpkin spice latte was a person. I, I don't even think she would find that description offensive. She runs an extremely color-coordinated Instagram profile, which really starts popping off every time fall rolls around. And the meme actually started because a Twitter user posted in 2019, hot girl summer is coming to an end. Get ready for Christian girl autumn. And from the giant scarves to the brunette tresses, everything about this image kind of just made sense to people. Despite this being the very first time the term was ever coined, Christian Girl Autumn meant something, and people knew exactly what it was. This picture left pumpkin spice residue on the inside of my screen. This picture goes to brunch and gets overly excited to annoyingly pronounce huevos rancheros. But some people felt like they were picking up an energy from the photo that was a little less fun. This picture asked to speak to my manager. This picture asked me not to kiss another man in public and if I could please leave the restaurant. But Caitlin got wind of the meme and was quick to set the record straight. Yes, people 
people's assumptions were partially true. She was in fact a Christian. However, thoughts on the LGBT community? Someone asks. Love is love, says Caitlin. Are you a Republican? No, I'm not. <laughs> fantastic answer. Honestly, I think Caitlyn handled all of this really well. If all of Twitter is going to make fun of my fall photos, at least pick some good ones. Super proud of these. For the record, I do like pumpkin spice lattes. Cheers! And you know, honestly, one could make fun of these photos, but they are really good. Yes, the aesthetic she's presenting here is often associated with a very specific kind of person, but that doesn't mean you can assume her whole personality, period. And her personality, as it turns out, seems quite lovely. I think a lot of influencers in that position would have gone wrong really quickly by either leaning into the meme way too hard or getting mad at people for making fun of them. But Caitlyn was kind of just like, no, actually, I just think Autumn is so cool. And that's impossible to argue with. So she basically won the internet and she's been getting brand deals based off the Christian girl Autumn meme to this day. People have embraced her not only because she seems like a cool person, but she has actually done things that they think are worth pointing out. The creator of the Christian girl Autumn meme, the lady who coined the term, she had to go fund me to help cover the cost of her transitioning. And Caitlyn not only shared that, but donated as well. She was so sweet about it, Markel, the creator says. I wasn't expecting her to be that sweet about it. I was expecting, come on guys, maybe don't clown me like that. Instead, she was like, finally, people are seeing my fall photos. So yeah, of the very, very few people who maybe actually deserve to take up our attention time and time again, I personally feel like Caitlyn or Christian Girl Autumn has used her influence quite well. Who knew that influencers could have a point? Thank you, Caitlyn. Also, to end that story, I do have to show you my personal favorite Christian girl Autumn meme. I just find this so funny. So you know the rapper Future? He's a popular musician, definitely a style icon. And with his tendency to wear the big hats and be showered in long blondish hair as well, somebody created this. Which, I, this is just one of my favorite pictures on the internet, I have to be honest. I think what gets me about this meme is if you look at it too quickly, you can't even tell it's a meme at all. But yeah, Future is my favorite Christian girl for sure. It's doubly funny because if you look at his lyrics, it's like, oh, oh man, none of those words are in the Bible. But anyways, now for our final story. But don't cry, it's probably our funniest one in this entire video. We can't, of course, end with an influencer catching a W. We have to end with an influencer catching an L because at the end of the day, that's the far more common scenario. And this scenario actually involves three influencers. KSI, Mr. Beast, and Logan Paul. Logan Paul is trash for obvious reasons. I feel like I don't have to get into them. Mr. Beast is trash for even more obvious reasons, which I feel like I, I really don't have to get into in this video. Between the two of them, they've got enough controversy to fill a Bible of their own, how to scam people, run unethical companies, get into a new scandal every week, all while basically rotting the minds of their child audiences. And then you've got KSI. Admittedly, I haven't really thought about KSI in years. What kind of person is he nowadays, I wonder? Well, that was all going to be made quite manifest when the three of them announced Lunchly. So Lunchly is like this Lunchables knockoff that um I don't think anybody really wanted, but it's here now and it comes in Fiesta Nachos, The Pizza, and uh, Turkey Stackums. It does genuinely just look like Lunchables. But this is the part where I kind of want to just zoom in on KSI specifically, as opposed to looking at Lunchly as a whole. I think there's enough problems with the Lunchly launch to fill an entire video of its own. Lunchly launch is not very easy to say, but this this, this is what really sparked the nonsense that we're going to get into in this video. So Dan TDM, who is by all accounts a YouTube legend, I mean, the man's been making popular videos for almost half my life at this point. He probably started before the vast majority of Logan Paul and Mr. Beast's fans were actually born. And he took to Twitter to say, what happened to YouTubers, man? I can't not say anything anymore. This is selling stuff for the sake of making money, simple. How does this benefit their fans? This is selling crap to kids who don't know better than to trust the people who are selling it to them do better. Now, I mean, as funny as the term they're selling stuff for the sake of making money is, Dan's point in the tweet is obviously correct. Slapping your face on food products of all things is very much beyond the norm of what YouTubers used to promote. In fact, this is actually something I've talked about years ago, or a year ago, I guess. My concept of time is so messed up at this point. But anyway, Eddie Burback uploaded this great video, uh, coincidentally about Mr. Beast, where he talked about ghost kitchens and like the trend of Mr. Beast slapping his name on food and selling it to kids. Mr. Beast Burger, as I seem to remember. And I commented a year ago, I said, I remember when merch used to be a hoodie or maybe a phone case if you were feeling fancy. We're out here dropping burgers now. So I agree with Dan. 
Period. But Logan Paul did not. Both he and Mr. Beast attempted to clap back by claiming that Lunchly's whole point was to be better than Lunchables. Mr. Beast, who had been radio silent on Twitter for months and months as more and more accusations piled up against him, decided to break his silence to defend his beloved Lunchly. God, even Lunchly itself is difficult to say. It's because it's got like four consonants in a row for some reason. And so that's, that's just not a very natural sound to make. Lunchables sells hundreds of millions millions of units and countless people eat it. Our goal is to give people a better for you alternative to it. Our turkey meal, for example, is 80 less calories, 60% less sugar, more electrolytes. We use real cheese. They use cheese products. Okay, we, we get the point. Also, uh, less calories does not equal more healthy. So the fact that he's led with this should tell you all you need to know. But again, the real star of the show today is actually KSI. KSI replies with this. And he says, looks like crap to me. So I guess because Dan said that they were selling crap to kids, KSI quoted Dan's toys that he was selling. His action figure, his U2s. And I guess the point of this is like, up, uh, gotcha. You criticized us for selling things to make money, but you were doing it too. But uh, this is so not what Dan was criticizing them for. And also, I think selling safe toys to children is a lot different than food stuff, which needs a lot more oversight. Also, it's pretty funny that he was saying Dan's U2s looks like crap, quote unquote, when uh, KSI also has a U2s. But I'm not the one complaining and crying on Twitter, though. You missed the point. Okay, so I guess you can't even bring that up as an argument. Dan says, you're doing this one thing. And KSI said, well, you did this other thing. And then someone's like, well, you also did that other thing. And KSI is like, nah, -uh, that's not the point. So then Dan said nothing and KSI decided to respond again. B -b 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 he was talking about food, KSI. He was sponsored, then promoted and made a whole video on Munchpack, a monthly sub box full of food and candy to his Minecraft audience full of kids. Now what? Oh, wow. That, that's so smug. I can feel the smugness dripping through the screen. Again, I would like to point out that this is still not the same thing that KSI is doing here. Promoting other people's food is not creating food, slapping your face on it, and then selling it to kids. People also pointed out that the sponsor he mentioned is apparently from nine years ago. Bro, how did he even find this? So anyway, at that point, Dan was like, nothing. He, he still didn't say anything, but then KSI responded again in a 20 minute video, actually, called Everybody Hates Us Right Now. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not about to watch all this. All you really need to know is that in response to this video, Dan continued to say nothing, and then KSI brought it up again in a different video. Keep in mind that at this point, Dan has sent one tweet, and we are now at two video appearances and multiple tweets. Dan D, what's his name? TDM. Dan TDM, yeah. yeah. Even his friends were like, um, hey, it was one tweet. Back off, Dan. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did wow. back, back off. off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he backed off there. He just made his one tweet and that was- Made his one tweet and I'm gonna be on his forever now. So at this point, I'm sure Dan realized he still didn't have to respond. And I'm so glad he didn't because it made KSI look even more unhinged for bringing it up again, this time in a sort of weird crossover episode. So as Marquez Brownlee was getting called out for releasing his $50 a year wallpaper app, KSI quotes that tweet and says, what happened to YouTubers, man? Pasting Dan's entire tweet there and then saying some dumb YouTuber said this exact same thing to me the other day. Rather than complaining, crying, and trying to cancel a YouTuber for creating a product, here's an idea. If you don't want to like a product, just don't buy it. Simple. You're selling food to children. I genuinely can't stress this enough. If any product needs to get scrutinized to an extreme level of detail, it should be YouTuber food products for minors. Like, how? I don't understand why they're acting so surprised that people are very critical of this. We should be. You know, this is good. And then Dan continued to say nothing and KSI responded again. <laughs> a lot has happened these past few days online. So here I am addressing everything below. Myapology.co.uk. Wow, you bought the domain and everything. And oh look, the apology is just a pre-save link for the song he's trying to promote. Didn't see that one coming. Actually, I kind of didn't see that one coming. Like, this is just sad. So that one technically wasn't a response. Except for the part where it was because he actually hit a video within the files of that website. What, you're expecting an apology? <laughs> Go touch some grass. I know this man is not telling us. To touch some you must be confused. You must be confused. But anyways, the story came to a rousing conclusion when after all of this back and forth, well, 
No, it was very one-sided. After all of KSI's literal crying all over the internet for weeks, Dan finally continued his silence and won the fight by doing nothing. And KSI responded again. And at this point, really just seems so desperate. Thanks for the free promo, Dan TDM. DM me your bank details for the payment, LMAO. My brother in Christ, what are you gaining from this? What are, You can't be getting that many streams. What person that doesn't know you is going to get introduced to you via this scenario? and then go pre-save your song. This doesn't seem very thought out. But yeah, I think that was three video responses and four written statements replying to a tweet, just a singular tweet that didn't even really call him out by name. And that's just for now. Uh, that last one was a couple days ago, as of the time of this recording. Who knows, he may say more in the future, but I certainly don't want to be there to see it. Thus concludes all the stories within today's cram session. But these have been my takes on the situation. Dave's take is that you should buy his upcoming app called Dave, in which it's just a picture of Dave. The good news is it's totally free, but the bad news is it, it is spyware. I've tried to explain that this isn't ethical at all, but we're working on it. We're working on it. And I'm, of course, excited to hear your take. I mean, this is the part of the video where a layman would ask you to subscribe, like the video and leave a comment, but I will ask you to enroll, evaluate the video, and submit your feedback. Because I am running a completely 100% all the way, totally, okay, maybe not really, somewhat unaccredited university. Probably. Just ask anybody in the student body and they'll confirm it for you. We're totally legit. And as for me, whether you'll see me in 24 hours or 24 months is honestly anyone's guess, but until then, thanks for watching. Your homework for today is to not tweet. If you can help it, just put the phone down. It's not worth it.